Before I get to the review, I just want to apologize about the delay. Uh, my truck was recently broken into, and the bag that I just did a review on that had the majority of my camping gear in it was stolen. I'm definitely going to be replacing the bag, probably with something different, just so I can do another review for you guys, but it might take me some time to replace all the gear. The monetary aspect of losing that stuff doesn't really bother me as much as the sentimental aspect does. A lot of the gear that was in that bag was uh, given to me when I was young and just started hiking or camping, so it's been with me for quite some time. Uh, so it's ha it's got a lot of meaning to me. Even though this is a pretty big setback, I can take a look at it from a positive point of view. It gives me more reason to uh, get more gear to review for you guys. So that's enough whining for today. Let's take a look at the Rothko Alice Pack. So I've had this particular bag for quite some time, I think probably going on six or seven years now. So I've had a good chance to spend a lot of time with it and I think it finally deserves a review. The Alice system has been around for quite some time, it was originally adopted by the US military in 1973 and it served all the way until 1997. This bag I believe is the largest variation of the Alice pack and it offers quite a bit of room. You will not find a single zipper on this bag. The main pouch is actually held closed by a drawstring. And the top flap is made of waxed canvas to provide a little bit of rain protection. However, the rest of the bag is not waterproof. This bag also has six external pouches. You've got three smaller ones up top, perfect for snacks, magazines, or even a flashlight. And then you've got three larger ones below that. I usually put my canteen down here along with my hammock and sometimes even my portable stove. The Alice Pack also has plenty of space for your tools. It has multiple loops on each side and even on the front. Now I don't know if they were designed for this purpose, but they do a pretty good job holding an axe. And this thing has zero patch real estate. You could go the route of ironing on a Velcro square for patches or just ironing the patches on yourself, but that might be a little bit more permanent and you might not want to ruin the bag. But, if that is the route you want to go, you've got plenty of space on this big front flap. I know the straps on this thing look absolutely awful, uh, but I gotta say they're really not that bad. And the external frame does a fantastic job at distributing the weight. And the frame's got some pretty good padding where it actually contacts your back, so hiking long distances with this thing really isn't that bad. The only real drawback on comfort with this bag is just putting the damn thing on. You have to loosen the straps up, and then when you put the bag on with the straps loose, it's obviously going to sag and the brace isn't going to be where it should be. So then you have to tighten it again. So if you need to get this bag on quickly and comfortably, those two things aren't going to mix. So just keep that in mind. And like I said in the beginning, I've had this bag for about six or seven years, and I have to say that it is extremely durable. In all of that time and all of the conditions that it's been in, nothing on this bag has broken, which is extremely impressive for its age. I also want to talk about price because if you're looking for a budget backpack, this is the perfect bag for you. I think I paid like 45, 50 bucks for it with the brace from a surplus store, which isn't too bad because some backpacks this size and of this quality can get up near the 100, $150 range. So if you're cool with rocking a piece of history, then the Alice Pack's for you. Mm -hmm. 